In the video I made the other day on the New Jersey Devils, I asked you guys which team you want me to talk about next, and by far the team I saw the most in the comments was the Montreal Canadiens, so that is exactly what we're going to do in today's video. If you watched my 7 bold predictions for this upcoming season video, you would know I'm pretty high on this Montreal Canadiens team, at least on paper. One of my bold predictions was that they finished top 3 in the Atlantic Division, if there is an Atlantic Division of course. I really like the offseason that they've had, we'll get more into that in a minute or two but I want to start off by kind of answering the question that I asked in the title and the thumbnail and that is are the Montreal Canadiens Stanley Cup contenders? Well my answer to that would be I definitely don't put them up there in the tier with like the Vegas Golden Knights, the Colorado Avalanche, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. To me I would say those are my top three Stanley Cup contenders heading into this upcoming season but as like a dark horse contender I honestly don't think that they're that bad of a pick. We're going to break down the Montreal Canadiens in this video, talk about the offseason moves that they made and what the team looks like heading into this season. Before we get into any of that though, you guys know the drill. Be sure to go follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay connected. You can also go check out my gaming channel. If any of those things interest you, links will be down below in the description. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel and you want more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 50,000. It would be amazing if we could hit that before Christmas. A bit of a far-fetched goal, but you never know. So if you're new, be sure to subscribe. And now let's begin. We'll start off by taking a look at the bigger moves the Montreal Canadiens have made so far this offseason. There's four pretty significant ones. We'll start off with their big free agency signing, Tyler Toffoli, a four-year contract with an annual cap hit of $4.25 million. If you guys watched my video on the best and worst signings from free agency so far, you would know that I'm a pretty big fan of this signing, especially if Tyler Toffoli can come into Montreal and play the way he played for the Vancouver Canucks. This could turn out to be an absolute steal of a contract. This is a guy who has scored 30 goals in a season. He's a four-time 20 goal scorer and he's only 28 years old, a four-year contract that's right in the range you would want for somebody like Toffoli and like I said, the cap hit is very reasonable. It's actually a lower cap hit than what he had on his previous contract. So I love that signing for Montreal. And then we get into some players that the Canadians actually acquired in a trade and then would later sign to extensions. Josh Anderson, of course, is the biggest one. He got that massive extension after they traded away Max Domi in a pick to bring him in. I'm not going to talk about this too much because I I feel like I have talked about it on the channel a lot lately. The contract especially is extremely risky. I talked about Anderson a good bit in the video I made two days ago where we went over players who needed to bounce back. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Anderson, be sure to go check that video out. So next we'll talk about the Canadians bringing in Jake Allen. This actually happened a while ago. I'm pretty sure it was Jake Allen and a seventh round pick in exchange for a third and a seventh round pick. After acquiring him, Montreal would sign him to a two year extension because he was set to become a UFA next offseason and I remember when this all originally went down a lot of people didn't like this move for Montreal because now this upcoming season they have so much money tied up into two goaltenders but to me personally this could prove to be Montreal's most important move of the offseason. Carey Price is not 25 or 27 years old anymore he's 33 and this past season he played 58 games and in the 2018-2019 season he played 66 games. Price has carried a pretty crazy Crazy workload. Pretty much for his entire career, the Canadians have obviously relied on him a ton because he's an amazing goaltender, has had a fantastic career, but over the past two years especially, at his age, that's too many games. And the reason is because Montreal just didn't have a backup that could take pressure off him and that they could trust. And now, they do. You look at Jake Allen, he just had a season in which he put up a 927 save percentage, was 12-6-3 and at 2.15 goals against. He had an incredible year and sort of stole the starting job from Jordan Binning in the playoffs. To me, this is a great get for Montreal. I know we don't know how many games there's going to be this upcoming season. It probably won't be a full 82 game season. So let's talk hypothetical. Let's say it's a 72 game season. If you have Carey Price play 40 of those 72 games and then Jake Allen play 32, especially if Jake Allen is playing at the level or even close to the level he played this past season, that is fantastic. To me, this has the potential to be one of the best goaltending duos in the NHL. A fresh carry price, it seems like we haven't seen that in forever. If bringing in somebody like Jake Allen helps you keep carry price fresh throughout the course of a regular season, that is a great move. And now the final player we'll talk about in terms of Montreal's offseason pickups, Joel Edmondson. He was actually supposed to be a UFA this offseason, but Montreal traded a fifth round pick for his rights and then signed him to a four-year contract extension and annual cap hit of $3.5 Montreal 
Montreal definitely overpaid for Joel Evanson. There's no doubt about that. But when you acquire someone who's set to become a UFA, like you acquire their rights, you don't really have any leverage because if that player doesn't sign with you and goes and signs somewhere else, then you pretty much just gave up a draft pick for free and it doesn't really look good on your organization. So I don't really blame Montreal for overpaying for Joel Edmondson. We saw it happen when the Philadelphia Flyers acquired Kevin Hayes' rights for a draft pick from Winnipeg. They overpaid for him for sure. Enough about the money they gave him though. Let's talk about the pickup, Joel Edmondson, the player, and it's a solid gift for Montreal. He fits the identity of their blue line. He's a big physical guy. I think he's like 6'3 or 6'4. Just had an okay season with the Canes. He can chip in some offense. He had 20 points, although he's not really known for his offense, of course. But yeah, overall, not too much to say about Joel Edmondson. He's not going to make Montreal any worse, that's for sure. So that is going to do it for talking about the bigger offseason pickups the Canadians have made. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm definitely a big fan of the offseason the Canadians have had so far, especially bringing in Jake Allen and signing Tyler Toffoli. But now I want to go ahead and take a look at the Montreal Canadiens forward depth chart heading into this season. I do want to clarify these aren't line projections or anything like that. I also got all these positions from cap friendly. So if you're a diehard Canadiens fan, you watch every game and you see somebody out of position. Again, I got these positions from cap friendly. So let's take a look here. Starting off down the middle, Philippe Deneau, Nick Suzuki, Jasperi Kotkaniemi, and Jordan Wheel. That's a pretty solid center core, especially if Nick Suzuki continues to develop. And if he carries his play from the playoffs over into this upcoming regular season, he could wind up being the number one center on this team in no time. Kotkaniemi is another guy whose development is obviously extremely important. And like Nick Suzuki, Kotkaniemi did look really good for Montreal in the playoffs. So it'd be great if he could carry that over into this upcoming regular season as well. Now taking a look at the left side, you have Thomas Tatar, Tyler Toffoli, Jonathan Drouin, and Arturi Lekkinen. Drouin's an interesting case to me in the fact that I don't really know where he's going to wind up playing. In my one trade candidate from every team video, I said Jonathan Drouin was Montreal's trade candidate because I didn't know if there was a spot for him in the top six. Now, a lot of Canadians fans disagreed with me on that and said he will definitely be in a top six role playing with somebody like Nick Suzuki. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. And now on the right side, you have Brendan Gallagher, who not too long ago signed a pretty big extension with Montreal, Josh Anderson, Yol Armia, and Paul Byron. If Josh Anderson bounces back, that is a very, very strong right side. As extras, I have Charles Hudon and Ryan Paling. I'm not quite sure what this season looks like for him. If there's a spot in the lineup, I think he's going to get every opportunity to make the NHL full time, but I just have him as an extra here on the depth chart. Overall, looking at this group of forwards on paper, there's a ton of potential here. They have a lot of dangerous weapons. I mean, I look at guys who could potentially have a 20 goal season on this team. Gallagher, uh, he probably will. Philippe Deneau could. Tatar, Toffoli, Suzuki, Josh Anderson has scored 20 before. Jonathan Duran definitely has the skill set to score 20 goals. Like, this is a dangerous group of forwards for sure. The one thing they're missing, obviously, would be just like a bona fide superstar up front that you would probably want on a contending team. But honestly, I kind of feel like the amount of depth and different weapons that they have sort of makes up for that. So that's it for looking at the forward group. Let's now shift our focus to the decor. Starting on the left side, you have Ben Sherratt, Joel Edmondson, Brett Kulak, and Alexander Romanov is a pretty big wild card for me. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if by the end of the season, he's playing in a top four role on the left side. If he is ready, I really think Montreal is going to give him every opportunity in the world to play. And that would obviously be a huge bonus if he comes in and has a strong rookie season because their left side isn't amazing. Obviously, the addition of Joel Edmondson helps, but it's still not the best. Moving over to the right side, obviously the Canadians are a lot stronger over there with Shea Weber, Jeff Petrie, Victor Mete, who can kind of play either side, and Noah Juleson I have up here just because I'm not really sure where he's going to be playing. He's definitely a pretty big question mark for me, but uh, overall, looking at this group of defensemen, it's not close to being one of the best decors in the NHL, but it's also not close to being one of the worst. I would say it's just okay. And now quickly looking at the goaltending depth chart for the Canadians. We already sort of talked about this when I went over the Jake Allen acquisition. You got Carey Price, Jake Allen, and as a third guy, I'm guessing it would be Caden Primo, but fingers crossed that they don't really have to use a third guy if Allen and Price can stay healthy. So that is a general idea of what the Montreal Canadiens team looks like heading into this upcoming season. Like I said at the start of the video, I have 
some pretty high hopes. On paper, there's a lot of reasons to be excited about the Montreal Canadiens. To finish off the video, as far as my expectations go, I expect them to be good. Obviously, I'm sure you could tell by watching this video, and I'm sticking with my bold prediction that I made in that video a week or two ago. I think they're going to be a top three team in the Atlantic, again, if there is an Atlantic. But the more I think about it, the more I am kind of hoping for that all-Canadian division, because could you imagine if Montreal is a really good team, the battles between them and Toronto throughout the season, that would be nuts. Also on top of that, the Battle of Alberta, I'm sure would just be even more insane than it was this past season. Those were some of the most fun games to watch. I got a little bit off topic there, but that is pretty much going to wrap up this video, talking about the Canadians and sort of previewing them heading into this upcoming season, going over the moves that they made in the offseason, all that type of stuff. Especially if you are a Habs fan, be sure to let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Also, everybody let me know which team you guys want to see me talk about next. And yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. That is the best way to show your support. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel and you want more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk Talk to you all in the next video.